I'm here. You are there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Been a while. Yeah, it's been a couple of months, I think. Where are you? I'm in uh, London. London. It's called Brixton. Ah. Yeah. Looks like... I was in uh, Scotland in uh, a place that's harder to pronounce called Tinnebruch. It's even harder to spell. <laughs> and uh, very nice place. I was there for a month, and uh, it's all it's all interesting. It's all tying up. It well, it's, I, I see sort of links everywhere because uh, uh, well, let, let's go back a bit. You know, Diro Gino, who who's who who knows many. I think you met Gino, and then I think Gino was just a Dermendra, and then there's LaCiel, and then through Gino, we met Chris, my mentor. I think you know he died, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's other people on the other side of the, of the planet, and and it's all this, as, as Gino is calling it, a, decentral, or a global decentralized mystery school. And uh, there's a lot of that stuff going on. It's a, it's a mystery where it is. <laughs> it's a mystery. Yeah, it's decentralized. You know who the students are. You, you, have to, you have to wander around the planet and then follow your inner compass and eventually you, you'll find it. Yeah, I mean, it's that's... And then, uh, so yeah, I'm involved in a call. I, I was not involved for a while, but every Tuesday now I'm involved in these calls with Gino and a bunch of others on that subject because it was all led by my former mentor oh now he's dead so people could well it's a funny thing you know if you imagine this must have happened in the past you'd have a, a lineage and you'd have the, the master would die and the students sit around saying well what do we do now <laughs> i said well you know that bit quite well you're quite good at that thing yeah but i can't do it as well as he could you know yeah, we've got to get better at it because we've got people now coming after wanting to know, let's do that thing. So it's a, you can't replace someone, but the the question is whether I work, because I was very much part of his work being, having been with him for so long that I, I know it very well. So do I want to pick it up and do something with it and work with others? And if, if Gino is there, and then I believe that they're talking to Lucille, so that's what you're doing with them, and then there's other people. So it's like, how does that all work? Because what I've seen, I've seen at Lucille, you've got 144 students or something. Great. In, in week two, they did the trust map. They did the five communication spaces, and they, they took a look at their conversational killers in week two. Wow. <laughs> And I, and you know, what's funny is I got no feedback. Like it was just like, it happened. And then again, like most things I encounter, like there's, there's nothing, like it goes into nothingness. And this was the first time I thought, okay, I'm going to get some feedback. You know, nothing. One person at the end said, oh, I really enjoyed it. And that was it. <laughs> but you get, what, you get 12 of 12? How does it work? You get what? Well, I'm in the you know, the, the sort of design team with LCL. So we meet weekly now, but we're yeah. also meeting for designing kind of thing. So we're going through the program. Um, but then there's 12 teams of 12 that are going through the program, but we, you know, I don't have access to them other than, you know, click a follow thing or something. I still don't quite know what that means, but anyway, it was just, it, it's just like the humor of the situation of no matter where I go, it doesn't matter what I do, whatever I put forth, there's just this me. <laughs> I mean, but the LCL people, they, they did say that it, it went over well, everyone liked it kind of thing. So, I mean, I, I did get that. So, Good. You know, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, I find it, uh, I mean, 
whether it's just the algorithms, but of course, because if, if you're attending to things and writing about consciousness or writing about anything like that, then the algorithms tend to sort of feed you this world that, from my impression, the entire world is full of life coaches. You know, that's, that's everybody's a life coach and a new age guru and everyone's gotten, hey, I've been studying for 25 years. I've lived in a cave and I can do stuff. You've got to come to me. 16 simple installments. I will solve you. So Meanwhile, um, they're all broke. Meanwhile, they're all broke. They've got their <laughs> mates for doing it. They're paying some marketeers, whatever, to help them with their social media. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, I'm hoping at some point that all these life coaches, all they'll be using my tools and then I can <laughs> take my percentage, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just, and then just retire. Yeah. yeah. You want to use a time translator? It's just going to talk you, take, it's just gonna <laughs> take one little fungible token. That's it. Just give me a token, right? Oh God. Tokens. Yeah. Now everyone's got a fun, you know, I'd be great. <laughs> people's grandmothers you got your fungible tokens darling what oh, not you as well yeah i've made some art i've drawn in my toilet paper and i've taken a photograph of it it's just becoming absurd but uh, i guess that's just the consistent complexification of diversity and that's that that once you go into that crypto sphere and when everything can be digitized and commoditized, you name it. I mean, do you know what time is some guy has NFT'd his soul? <laughs> How'd you do that? Well, I hope he got more than 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been sold? I remember being sold in high school. And it was, it was a very humiliating thing. It was like all the people sort of go in front of people and you get bid upon. And, and I think mine was one of my good friends got like 20 bucks and I was like four bucks or something. And, you know, it's just completely humiliating to stand up there and like someone throws you a mercy bid or something. <laughs> I never did that. We did do the, but when you do tic-tac-toe to choose who's in your team, you had that whole sense of, Am I going to be picked? But I was quite sporty, so I was fine there. But uh, yeah, yeah. But apart, I mean, I've got I've got a cane now. I've got cane. a cane because I've got a cane because I fell. I had a bad fall. It's the kind of thing I wasn't expecting to say until I was in my seventies. But I had a bad fall <laughs> by the rocks in Scotland, so I twisted my ankle very badly. Talking to my son, poor guy, blames himself. He will need therapy in the future. Uh, start saving up now. But uh, yeah, so I really badly twisted my ankle and then I ended up having to stay in the house for most of the month. Really? And it, had, it had no Wi Fi, no 4G. So I felt as if I was in a witness protection program. <laughs> Did you, isn't that a movie where the guy's in some room and he watches a murder being done with uh, Jimmy Stewart? Yeah, Jimmy Stewart. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. That's, uh, that's yeah, that's, I forget what it's called, but yeah, he's, he's lying there with his leg up and just can't go and just sees it all happening in front of him. Yeah. Well, I was in a remote village in a remote house and saw nothing but an amazing view and that was it. And uh, to get a connection, you have to pick up WhatsApp or any email. I had to hobble out the back of the house because they couldn't tell me where the keys were for the front door. So I had to go all the way out the back, round the side, and then 10 metres out front down a hill to pick up my messages. Yeah, I can talk then, but I can't talk any other time. They shuffle back in again. <laughs> Three weeks, waking up at 7 a.m. In, in, in the house, just... Ah, <laughs> now what? So you, yeah. you you didn't know writing. You didn't you didn't uh, expand upon your book. Use the time. Yeah, something? I'm. I did. It's a good question. It's. Uh, I spent uh, 
a lot of time playing solitaire to train to train my focus and discipline. And then I made a lot of notes about uh, really just uh, strategy, I think. Religious strategy? No, just strategy in general, oh. in terms of, uh, I said really just strategy, so okay. religious strategy, yeah, well, it could be religious strategy. Just uh, all the people that I know and what's happening and the people that are coming into my life. And uh, so the, the guys, the, where I was staying, the guy's parents, the guy's the son is, is Darius, who is a um, beautiful guy who was a formerly, uh, he had a number one song in the UK and a, and a platinum album in the UK in the early 2000s. He was third in pop idol. Wow. So the story goes that I, so when, I think I told you this, but I, when I, when I, when Chris died, I came on a Zoom call the same day and Gina invited me in. And all these people on the call, apart from David, his son, all the people on the call had met Chris because I introduced them to him. So wow. all these people mourning his death. I'm going, all right, so, all right. Because I fell out with him in May last year. <laughs> So uh, strange to turn up a funeral. It's a bit like, be, like being the ex-wife who turns up and saying, "Who are you? Who are you lot? <laughs> oh, you're the new lot. You're the new breed." But they now want me to come back and hold the flame, help. Or I don't know if you've, you've ever done that. Is to look at you know someone else's work or okay, you might be involved in it, but to think of doing it or contributing to it or so the, the essence is right now that Franz, who's one of the group who knows Gino, I'm talking to her on Wednesday. She and Darius were basically passed the torch by Chris. He chose those two to say, I want you to take this on. Uh, Darius claims that Chris said that he expected me to come back before he died. So I now have come back. And it's like, right, we've got all this stuff on consciousness and intelligence. Let's do something with it. So Chris had ideas. I mean, he he's, uh, I mean, you know, such an intellect, such an experienced thinker and intellect at uh, a very senior level in politics, economics, you know, everything he did. I mean, he chaired the national... Natural Medicines Commission in the UK to help with the legal framework for natural medicine in the UK. Without him and that group, there would be laws for the natural health. So, you know, plus he helped the devolution of Scotland from the UK, three men. He was one of them. He wrote the Intelligent Economy for Scotland and he set up the Constitution Commission to, to create the first ever written constitution in the world for a country that exists. So he did all that. <laughs> so I can't emulate that. But I, I was there when we were going through all the work. So who knows, all this stuff might come together and start to connect. Is, is there a, what would be, what was unique about Chris's work that you didn't see anywhere else? Well, the first thing that Chris was doing was he was consciously fundamental. So um, he would also, well, he would constantly fundamentalist. He would say, he would say, let's start. Everyone's chatting. and said, hey, can we just begin with what do we think a human being is? Can we agree on that? Once we agree on what that is, we can maybe move forward. You say spirituality. What do you mean? There's thousands of different, unless we have the same understanding of what we're talking about, where do we go? And he had such a brilliant way of, pinpointing what in terms of um, what's important. And so consciously fundamental, he was very good at writing um, simplicity. Well, he, he never used jargon or technical terms. 
So he even started writing about the relationship between relativity and quantum mechanics using very simple language saying, there's big stuff, we call that macrocosm, there's little stuff, how does it relate? Let's go into that. No mathematics, you don't need it, it's conceptual. Mm. So he was saying that from the perspective of planets, um, what's happening in between them is the microcosm, which is like quantum, which is small. So for them, it's small, but for us, it seems big. So everything is relative to human. So you're saying that the problem is we leave out the subjective human in everything we're doing when it comes to science. And that was part of his work as well. So he, he wrote very simply. So the thing he always did was say, if how you define something enables you to think about it. So if he said, uh, let's say consciousness is just, okay. First of all, no one knows what it is. Okay, nobody. And there's no agreement as to you know, hard problem of consciousness, all that stuff. Is it the brain that produces it? Are we in it fundamentally? Who knows? Let's talk for 50 years about it. But let's say, can you become more conscious? Yes. Okay, great. Are you aware you say, you know, after everything you say? Are you aware you're speaking quickly? Are you aware that every time you sit in that sofa, you sit down so heavily that it might break after three months? Oh, you're not. Okay, so now you're aware and you can be conscious of a lot of stuff. A lot. At a lot of levels. Okay. Especially all the things that irritate me. <laughs> yeah, emotional. Yeah, right. Here, here's this week. We're saying everything that yeah <laughs> triggers you. Right. There's that's that. Once you're aware of it, the intelligent thing is to do something about it, and that's the hard bit. So he basically wrote uh, full spectrum intelligence with the simple framework of you've got your physical, emotional. Uh, mental, spiritual, social, intuitive. There's no order to it. It's just they're all happening at once. You work on one consciously, it helps the others. Okay, I just want to ask a question about that because uh, it was mental, physical. emotional, physical, but you said intuitive and social? So, yeah, so physical and mental, emotional, a lot, most people kind of would understand that. And then... Um, uh, yeah, intuitive, social, and spiritual. I've, I've never heard, like, I, you know, I'm kind of interested in categories, right? And I'm interested in that yeah. particular one, you know, there's so, that those frameworks are the big frameworks, right? But I haven't heard specifically one that, let's say, differentiated the spiritual intuitive like that, or just like, I haven't heard one that had the mental physical, emotional, spiritual, intuitive, and social. Yeah. So that's unique. So the intuitive was more, you know, and he was very good at epistemology. You know, how do we know what we know? You know, so intuitive is, you know, without knowing, you just know it. And this is, well, how does that work? And uh, how do you develop it? Um, and then going into special abilities, the psi, you know, the whole classic psi, the telepathy, precognition, clairvoyance, and psychokinesis, the, the big four. So that that all that stuff, which he did a lot of. But he often found that people wanted to work on those because they're sexy and they uh, there's a sense of, oh, I'll be powerful. So he stopped. Uh, teaching it. Um, tell me what those four were again. In Psi, PSI. Yeah. Uh, you've got what? Well, telepathy. The what? Uh, clairvoy well, clairvoyance. You've got clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsentience, but all the clear ones, which is you know experiencing something, remote viewing or remote feeling or remote sensing or seeing. And then you've got... Uh, um, psychokinesis and uh, precognition pre, pre what precognition precognition so a lot of people yeah that's the north american pronunciation yeah the i i would say that a lot of people have had 
precognitive experiences. Um, I know I have. <coughs> um, and telepathic. Psychic is no. Clear audience and stuff, yes. But what I loved as well about Chris was he'd say, if someone says, oh, 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 become telepathic, I don't be silly. He says, you know, how do you do that? He says, well, how do you do anything? And they would say, what do you mean? Well, how do you make a cup of tea? And they say, well, you get your tea bag. He says, no, 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 no. How, how do you make a cup of tea? They say, well, mm, get it before the tea bag. Yeah, before the tea bag. <laughs> you have to want to make a cup of tea. So do you want to be telepathic? Oh, you do? Okay. Are you serious about it? Yeah. Well, then you will become telepathic. Nice. And he made it that simple. Right. It's like, it's not difficult. So he was always trying to make the ex esoteric, exoteric. Uh, this is normal. What, you, what we call paranormal now will, will eventually be very normal. Everyone will be doing it. And he actually, in two th when I was with him in 2011 in Spain, he was starting to flesh out the legal frameworks for telepathic communication because there would have to be permissions. No, you cannot enter me. I'm talking, you know, get out. You're crossing the boundaries. You are, you know, so there have to be agreements around, um, you know, in a way, psychic, psychic rape, really, uh, or psychic theft or, or these kind of things. And, and how do you then also help people understand what is what is their stuff, what's coming, what's coming out of their material and what's, and, and that requires sensitivity and, and a lot of things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, he had one book and he's, he started to write short courses in things like a short course in spiritual intelligence, a short course in, and for him, spiritual intelligence, well, he, he didn't like to use the word spiritual, but he says, people have a sense of what it means. And, and that's what we'd always say is like, listen, any reasonably intelligent person has a sense of what you mean by spiritual. Okay, you could say non-physical, you can say lots of things, but we don't have to get caught up with it and spend hours arguing about, about it. So there was something about him which uh, I always saw it when he was around and you had any kind of fluffiness or new age or not intellectual rigor around you say excuse me so everything's illusion apart from the book that you've written okay <laughs> that that get that that kind of thing everything's maya apart from that because you're selling it so there's this can, whole... I, ask, can I ask a question though like yeah. yeah sure did you have a specific like did you say okay i want to be your student can you be my teacher did you have an agreement or an arrangement or was it just by proximity as a, a sort of more social thing? Well, we, we tried, we tried it. We tried that once and it didn't, didn't work. <laughs> Me being his student. So it's a, he was my, you know, he, I could say he was my spiritual father. He was a surrogate father. He was a friend. He was also my son. You know, he was a colleague. He was many things. Uh, without doubt, in my life, the most intimate relationship I had with anybody, you know, male, female, dog, cat, spirit, God, whatever. So a lot of, a lot, I know a lot of that I took on uh, just by being around him because he had such a powerful presence that everybody picked up on. Um, and a lot of, you know, challenges and self-sabotage and the whole stuff. I struggled financially as well because um, when you get to the point where it's you, you can't, you're very alone when you're doing this work. Sometimes you, you, there's no one to talk to, which is why he loved me being there because he could talk to me about anything. Um, you know, as most most people don't get up in the morning saying I'd like to be more conscious. It's not something that enters their head. Um, and that was a challenge. How do you actually wear the doorways for people? You know, people want a better girlfriend or more money if it work. You know, that's that's what they want. They want a nicer car. They want to, you know, 
help their mum who's in uh, who's not well just now. It, it's just very basic. So, but uh, as he said, you know, give it time. You know, if if we are talking about this now, and people you know, people I know, there's hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of us chatting like this, it will become the norm. So we just happen to be blooming early, like in the garden. We just we're just in the light and showing ourselves first, whereas everything else is just coming out the out the mud. Like scorched. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and then it and people don't like being woken up, you know. So I'm 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 interested to see if I do actually feel that I step up and start teaching it. Because I'm 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 not as gifted as he was. I don't have his I mean, he was able to, he did say that you have to really know the person well to be able to, um, if, if they're if somewhere else, you to enter into a space and he, he could touch people. He was it. So people, I've, I've met the people who said, yeah, he was in the room and I could feel him. He actually touched me. So to that psychokinesis, that's, that's telepsychokinesis. <laughs> um, and he just did that through training. He trained himself for, well, he died at 74. So he trained himself from when he was about 19. And he worked it out for himself, which was the impressive thing. He didn't have a teacher. Well, I could say Rudolf Steiner because that was the book that he began with and Steiner's exercises. So he began with that, but um, yeah, mostly walking in the mountains by himself. So we'll see. So he was very close to Gino um, before he died. They were chatting a lot. Gino, well, being a younger man, Gino was Gino's 56 now and Chris is uh, 74. So being that figure, he, he was the driver, instigator. Chris would write, make a few notes and the next day you'd have a, a beautifully formed article on the modern mystery school as a concept using language that that your you know your mother could understand you say all oh, right that sounds interesting he was brilliant at it and he could do it because that's what he did every morning 6 a.m up to the computer writing very and you start off with like one or two lines three lines just saying you know just sketch it out and then you have the structure on that and so a modern business school will, will include the technology we currently have so um, the virtual reality, augmented reality, all of those things. Which his son, David, actually is one of the, he's very, he's an expert at VR. So I'm talking to David about creating things. And as far as I'm aware, I don't, I'll find out Wednesday, France has been talking to Peter Gibbon, or I don't know who's running the training on the CL side, but uh there's some kind of communication there so there's lots of stuff happening with the idea of there are places that gino's got and other friends have got like there's stuff in nevada there's in ohio there's you know uh, darius actually has a flat in vancouver because his ex-wife is from canada she's a uh yeah film she she was in the film species with <laughs> I forget who was in that film, but uh, she was the sill. And so that's his ex-wife. Darius was in Hollywood for many years, musical. And Darius wants me part of his work. So I, something's going to happen. I don't know when, I don't know what. And the game of now is there for me as a, well, the original workshop, uh, which I now designed a building that I want to do stuff in sacred geometric shaped building in nature that the game of now be run with um, eight players. Um, but uh, in terms of, because for me, I think it's how to connect to the, yeah, the, the masses, the, yeah, the masses. I mean, I met a guy recently who, who's got nothing to do with, he's a business guy. 
and he says that he's on Eventbrite a lot, and he says that he looks at statistics and the explosion in desire for personal development courses is huge. And I pity anybody who's starting their journey looking at the just the, how do I even begin to you know. So you might start with your classics, you you'll read the power of now because Eckhart's that's out there as a you know primer. You've got Deepak Chopra's one area there, you've got a lot of American voices. Um, your sad gurus, your mujis, all that, that sort of that world, your Ajay Shantis, your classic male gurus, you've got your, a lot of people doing dialogues and deep dives into dialogue, exploring regeneration, and so you've got your Schmachtenbergers and your Jordan Halls, you've got your intellectuals talking about the commons, you've got so many different um, areas to enter into We've got to sort our shit out <laughs> and how, how does that somehow connect up so for me with the game of now uh, there's the workshop but then the actual games in cities and designing games that through the back door uh, because of design with a lot of presence and conscious design that, that in the design is a sort of moments where people have a just a little moment where they might just be asked to look at the sky for 30 seconds you know that kind of thing and uh, I, maybe i'll stop talking now and I'll pass to you because i'm interested in if you've had ever ever had thoughts of the for me the key question is we're, we're clearly moving to other currencies we're moving to other kinds of tokenization of value that people want different things and that the current financial monetary systems are all legacy systems designed specifically for the industrial revolution and those, you know, but the post industrials that, you know, you and I could create a token right now and we can call it the whatever. And I give, I give, uh, we've got to create 50 million of them and I'm giving an eye to 10 for that, whatever, and back and forth. Um, so if, if that becomes the norm, then you, know, you create a game, you create a currency for the game or credit system, and off you go. And uh, then when everyone's in the game and everyone's attracted to it, you, you kind of, you could swap those tokens for anything as, as long as whatever you're trying to swap it for, they accept it. So you can go to your local store and buy food because they accept, they love that token because they want them. So it becomes, it could become hopefully very simple and easy, or it could be so fucking complex that the whole thing is, hang on, I've got 5,000 wallets here and tokens. I don't know what, do you accept this? What's that? Oh, here's $50, you know. Any thought? I'll stop there. Thanks for listening. Well, I mean, I know Chris... You know, it was really important to you and I, uh, I haven't learned much from you about him mm. and I appreciate you know taking notes in a sense of going okay like you have to understand the significance of certain information you can just say the category sort of simply but you know if it is a, a new methodology of assessing things in my mind like it's I'd love to see his work at some point like if you can send me any of his writings that are there mm -hmm. um, I'd appreciate just to see because you know, I'm like you, right? I want to learn. And some people really have done. Well, let me I see think. if I've got. So here I've got the, I've, I mean, I've, when I do this, do you still see me moving my head or do I freeze? No, you're, I see you. Right, because I'm looking at his, uh, right, so I'll just do that. I don't think you'll mind that I'm sharing with you and uh, uh, you disabled screen sharing. What? You disabled screen sharing. Can I? Well, I you. I have to make you. Uh, yeah. Host. I should be able to do it now. Okay. 
because what I um, this is so th this is the the original short course intelligence the second version second edition which so that they, they, you can see the chapters there that's nice so there's something about the way that that Chris worked was that he would be consistently removing adjectives and whittling and becoming clear and simple. So that one sentence, so for example, feeling better in that, in that two words, do you want to feel better? And how do you feel something better? Mm -hmm. So and all of that, and he would take it and he would look at it very differently. Um, he's got his classic anecdote so i wasn't on the train at the time but he was on a train and he had to stand and it was a train to the university so there was a guy in front of him reading a very complex mathematical book you know full of abstract equations and uh, the guy sneezed all over chris like just made him wet <laughs> and chris stood there and the guy didn't even realize he did it and didn't apologize because he didn't realize. And Chris said that most people would say that guy is really intelligent. He can do really complex math. And Chris said, but he has no awareness of his body and his senses. He was not aware of this. He's, he's, you know, he's in his mind and meant and mathematical capacity is a very small part of mental intelligence. But our society places that higher than anything else. Uh, with the academics and the scientism and, and, and having to mathematically prove everything. Uh, whereas you know, opening up our senses and seeing the world through different eyes, that was it. I mean, he, he was also about, for him, a mystery school now, the modern version is the whole person looking at the whole world. That, that's it. And so what does that mean? What is the whole person? And what is the whole world? Because right now, science is looking at the physical aspects of the universe using our physical senses with extensions, telescopes and microscopes and any other technology that makes us look subatomic particles, you know, CERN, the hydrogen, the, the, the collider, all of that is an extension of our physical senses. We're not looking at the non-physical aspects of the universe. So when we activate those, we will then see what we cannot see with our physical senses, such as, for example, uh, higher intelligent beings that are already here. You know, they're not, we can't see them with our physical senses, but with our intuitive and, and spiritual beyond that, we, we, something's here. I can feel it, there's something happening. And these senses, are not because we're so used to thinking about senses in terms of our physical senses we, we don't know how to think about non-physical senses so when you listen uh, very deeply to somebody or something you're listening actually able to move in holographically into something and you can pick it up and you, you have information so it's all about information how you then Oh, there's a signal there's a signal here i can feel a signal where's that coming from so he could pick up signals from all sorts of places you know and tune into other things yeah there's chapter 12 is well, the, the power of belief i mean that's okay bruce lipton and all of his world have, have looked at that there's all sorts of things about removing limiting beliefs but uh It's fascinating. I, I've have you read have you read any Dean Radin? No. Dean Radin is uh, one of the senior uh, people at IONS, the Institute of Nautical Scientists. Uh, scientists. He he's uh, he he also has he's got degrees, and I think it's uh, 
engineering and PhD in something else. So he's a, he's very well versed in scientific process and he's done a lot of research, mainly in sci, in telepathy and everything else. And one of his books is called Entangled Minds, which is brilliant. And uh, or Entangled something, Entangled something. But um, I've been reading those with my, my leg up. And there's a really interesting phenomenon, which is like, you could bring a hundred people into a room put that up there and chris talked about this as well he, he, he said there was a, an experiment done 100 people in a room person giving a lecture there's a metal vase on the table and underneath there's a magnet the person presses the button thing starts to levitate and explains it you know and then afterwards they ask the people so how do you explain the levitating thing and half of them didn't notice it so it's it's like you could bring someone into a room who then starts to levitate and then you talk because it so goes against their belief system their belief system maintaining that is more important than admitting the fact that they saw somebody levitate and this is the challenge only when people's belief system starts to crack and then we have the challenge if you do crack and you start to have experiences, you then are, how do you express that to people you know and love and your friends and your family who then start to think we have to sort this person out or we have to help him. Um, but you, the, the, your entire way of perceiving the world changes. And this is where Gino comes in. Gino wants to help people like that. He wants to find ways of supporting those uh, people. And that I think you know, with, with what you're doing and with what Damendra is doing and what, you know, it's slowly opening people up to a wider, uh, be more open and, and maybe a different rea reality tunnel that sort of pulls them away from that. But in some ways that they're supported through the, how do you support people through the shift and the changes? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I, I don't know, the biggest problem I've seen, but I, I think in the West Coast here where I've come across quite a few people who've had their awakenings or ultra spiritual experiences or whatever it is. And then, you know, wacko, like the medical system comes at them, the family and friends come at them and there's no way to integrate it. There's no one to talk to and they either go crazy or they, you know, life is not easy. Yeah. I, I know through my own, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've had enough strange things happen to kind of like, uh, I guess like once you've had enough of them, they sort of become normal in a sense, or you, you sort of, you, you've got to gauge, you know, who you can talk to and you've got to gauge, but basically how you're going to navigate through life because, you know, you want to share it with people that I did or I always have, but you can go too far. Everyone's got their limit of, you know, that belief system you're talking about of what they think is actually allowed to happen around them or could happen around yeah. them. And so here, you know, I, I think the Geno's network is is perfect because it's going to happen more and more. Like the imaginal cells are are spreading. And you know, underneath COVID, I think COVID is forcing the stupidity blanket that's kind of on the species. And, and now everyone's, you know, the people that are kind of near the, you know, we're waking up or just awaking or just kind of like, huh, you know, all of a sudden they get this blanket on it and, and they're, they're going to well, through. Yeah, I mean, there's a, you know, one, I wouldn't mention his name, but he's part of this group who, who, who came into it just, just through relationships and, and, and he's saying, he was in his mid-40s, he's saying, you know, I've been in a job all my life, I've seen, and I, I now I'm, I'm now realizing this can't go on, this whole, what's happening, this is, this is wrong. But it doesn't have any language for it. And I, you know, I asked him, have you ever had a spiritual experience? You know, whatever you think that is, you know, anything, if you can get a sense of what that is. And he says, Well, I once met this guy. Um, you know, he was a sort of drunk or something, you know, and he was a mess, and he just stopped me in the street and he just told me lots about my life that he wouldn't know. And and he said, how do you know this? He says, oh, I'm an angel. And then off he went. So it, it, 
when when people have that experience like that, they, how do you fit that into your that that okay didn't happen? Just forget it because it's only once. Forget it. Um, and it's like, uh, yeah, like you, I've had. I think my, one of my funniest ones I always forget is when one I was at Chris's, I was living with him and I was in bed in the morning. Uh, some was either during the night or early in the morning, but some, something came through me and turned me and hit me against the wall. And and I went back and God, what? And then I fell asleep again. And then I almost forgot about it. And uh, I remember Chris saying, we said breakfast, I mentioned it. He said, yeah, yeah, this is a good reminder. So, and Chris, what I love, funny about Chris as well, it's, quite, it's nice to, this is thank you for this. It allows me to share some anecdotes and memories. I remember once there was a, there was a, a few of us and he said, just very normally, yeah, have you seen outside the window this morning? I mean, the amount of flying saucers that were there this morning, you know, it should have just got out of the way. It was creating quite a pollution. And just talking about it normally as if, you know, what? And then see what are you talking about? You know, and, and just sort of drop it in and see if people are listening. And I think that sense of, uh, the skill of, I learned through him, I've also learned through another friend who's, who's also an adept, is how you drop, you drop seeds in that sort of create a sort of cognitive dissonance in somebody, but you don't then go on to explain anything. You just ignore it and carry on. <laughs> like my other friend was a, was a we took his dog out of the car and a cat appeared from nowhere. I mean, just came out of nowhere, just there. And then he just went, did you see that? Then moved on. And in his movement and in his, did you see that? It was, that cat came from nowhere, right? And I could hear there was content and information in him doing it because we, I'm telepathic with him. It's like, that's a glitch. So that, that came out of nowhere. Mm and therefore that can happen anytime anywhere with anything suddenly mm. something just comes out of it's like the photons in the, the quantum realm you know they just come in they flick in they flick out so when that whole quantum stuff becomes more normal the human fuel potential suddenly people get together and then suddenly because of their presence and their their frequency that appears out of what is that <laughs> come from is it coming towards us i think so does it look friendly i don't know so oh, it's gone now yeah hi <laughs> so i i have uh something to report in a sense because i've always seen you me and Gregory in a bit of a triad. Did we all meet together or something, or did how did that come? We up? met once on the, I think it was the first call that because uh, I introduced you to him. Did you? Okay. And it was I remember it well because it was in. Uh, I, now this would be after two thousand sixteen, because that's when I met Gregory. And, um, oh dear, what's her name? Yeah, C, C Glassman. So I was in a call with the two of them and I forget who put me in touch with Gregory. Forget. But uh, yes, that whole dance. And then the first, the first call, I remember being on the call, it was you and him sharing each other's uh, or maybe I wasn't on the call when you recorded it and then I watched it later because I think I remember you saying you know, two people who've got decades of work. One first call, it's how do you <coughs> how do you share that? Mm. Yeah. yeah, let me give you a little instance of the time translator right away, okay? <laughs> 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 well, it's 
okay, so I've been spending more time with him and sort of looking at the integration because I didn't quite like I spent quite a lot of time with you, let's say compared to him. And so for the last while, we've been having, you know, quite a lot more communication, at least there, the, the link happened, I guess, between our work, where I don't know how much you know, of, of his stuff, but I'll, I'll try to give what I've got, I guess, in a sense of the like free space being outside of linear time and being sort of timeless and using the yin yang symbol as almost the representation of that. And in the present moment, and I could see where you guys would have a lot of fun with your interpretations of that, um, coming together to sort of, I'm getting like step into the free space. And I guess it, it could be coming from Buckminster Fuller and he probably coined a lot of this and that there was a possibility of a game, a worldwide game that I see, you know, in Facebook and different, I think Brett was playing a lot with that or the, with a worldwide game. And so for me, there was like, he said 144 moves. And so I immediately, you know, 144, the shared knowledge community, 144. Mm -hmm. So I immediately start, you know, bringing my number systems in to find the integration points so I can understand what it is. And I mean, in the present moment on the time translator, I should, you know, that I should put that back. Let me see if I can get that. But it's, it's, it's like looking at, you know, kind of like when we found out in our work that I was in your kitchen, and that's where the portal to planetary guardians was, right? All of a sudden I could sit yeah. myself in your idea and then it, it, I liked it. So I, I want to be in that idea. So in my mind, I'm creating this, you know, the, the preconceptions of how the ideas are going to connect together. And so, so I think anyone's got a body of work. That's what they do, right? You either have an internal knowledge structure that you're playing with or you don't. And when you do, you're always trying to fit where things go compared to however you figured it out. And if someone's got a huge piece, like originated a massive piece, then that piece can directly hugely affect whatever you've got. Well, I mean, for example, Darius, who has, uh, I mean, I've never met him physically, but we've talked quite a bit uh, since uh, Chris died. So I, I met him the day he died. So that was the end of December. So I met, I met, I've only known Darius to now, well, three, three months. And uh, he knows some people in the media and um, Golden Spider for me was uh, aimed at the sort of 14, 15 years to 25. You know, it's, it's not aimed at adults. It's aimed at that younger age to give them a, a kind of, this is a mixture of hitchhikers combined with you know Dungeons and Dragon type things combined with a bit of Monty Python and a bit of Doctor Who. So you got all that thrown in with a bit of farce, and it's just fun. Uh, but it's based on the hero's journey. And then if so, if Gino's in there and you're in there, and 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 there's all sorts of other people, then then when it comes to that part of a story they can access into your world and that's a portal into yours. And then it's back. And if it's, if, if, for example, the library, I could, in the library, there's um, George Mercurius sitting down, enjoying a nice cognac, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. And then see, so who's that? Oh, that's George Mercurius. And he then takes you into the library and you go to the, the green bays and mm. off you go. Um, and I think that what I've, I, mean, I don't know how much you know about like Brett Vershowski and, and all the other, I mean, the Lumis of the world and that the, there's a whole, I mean, I'm on this thing, I get texts, there's like 85 people in one Telegram group, there's like 200 in another, there's 250 and it's just, you know, but they're bringing in the heart, the heart monitors uh, stuff, the whole biofuel stuff, the whole neurofeedback, neuroscience, wearables, all, all that thing is, they're doing a lot of that. And then you've got the, like Brett with the Together Land and the whole story of he's got his thing. And the big challenge is, um, I mean, Lumi and many of these other lot often get challenged by, we don't want brands anymore, we just want it to be one unified you know, single sign-on gets you into the whole 
you know, paradigm. I can go that way and go that way. It's a, yeah, it's a new paradigm access mm -hmm. portal to everything. But then you get the whole ego stuff coming in. No, it's got to be my name. I'll forget the name. We'll call it anything. Yeah. Okay, we'll forget the name. It's been named, but you're going to name it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't care about the names yet, but you're trying to create forces into your... So I've, I've, I'm very much taking the view that it's like a, if you enter any beautiful gardens, like you enter Kew Gardens here in London, beautiful gardens, you've got hundreds of plants, trees, water features, beautiful. All of them are different. And some people like to go to the gardens, the greenhouse, whatever. So it's the same for me for some people be attracted to the time translator and those kind of things. And we're attracted to Gregory and the whole Mercurius and the library, oh, books, library, the maybe more intellectual or more glass bead gameish for me anyway. <clears throat> and others will be, you know, more attracted to what I'm doing or Gino's doing. I mean, Gino does a great job traveling the world, promoting, uh, just promoting a very different way of doing things. And he does it in very staid settings and very conservative settings. So and he talks about uh, insight, intuition, breaking through the consensus reality. He's got his, you know, five levels model. Um, and, and that for me is, is, we're not making anyone choose. This is the, this is the, this is the ultimate framework. Hmm. Just test it. And I think that's the key is how do how do they say they enter into your world and, and all, of, all your work? How do they, how can they orientate themselves quickly so it's not like, oh, I'm here 10 minutes, I'm out. So for example, when I, you had a Robert Anton Wilson? So Robert yeah. Anton Wilson, uh, genius of man, polymathic mind. Uh, he was a good friend of Timothy Leary, Alan Watts, all these guys. Um, psychedelic community or, or you, you know you name it israel regarded these pioneers and and sort of psychonauts stuff but he he he's a very complex explanation of alaliri of the eight neurological circuits you know in the brain mm. now i read i start reading that and I, i'm just not i understand it intellectually of course but I, i'm not attracted to doing that learning about it and so on and so on. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm much more into actually a, a, a free space. I like free space, but talking about what is like now is, uh, for me now is more about where our attention is than a concept of now um, and, and what is a game, what is it's a playful experience that's encoded with play and, and fun. And then out of that, where do we go? And it's using my skills and experience as a facilitator, as someone who loves the unknown, who got, I've got a very deep, broad knowledge of a lot of things and how I can then facilitate that. I, I, I love being in a room with people, he's an academic and this guy's 16 and autistic and this, I love that bringing such diverse group and saying, well, we're a microcosm of humanity. If we can do something, and create something beautiful together, then everyone can. Uh, so that that but that for me is the workshop, and then the actual expression of that as a city game. Uh, yeah, that that whether that's going to be physical or virtuality, I don't know. With David's help, but I'm. And then Darius says, "Hey, we can create a." TV series, like, all right. Well, can I just interrupt for a sec? I, I feel like I gave you a whole bunch of time to download a bunch of stuff to me. And I find when I'm downloading, you keep taking combo back and, and uh, there's a bunch I want to sort of get. Go for it. Go for you. Okay, so I, I don't want it to be, I want this one way for a bit, okay? <laughs> because the, I think what's happened is um, Gregory has the game, let's say by 144 moves. And what he said to me is I move number one. And so just to become 
move number one and just like being like in your kitchen it, it had me think okay well what does it move what does it mean to make the first move and of all the things that i got which move would i make and right now there's a software program it's almost coming out called choose a remedy i, I might have shown it to you but it's almost done it could be done and today uh, today's the day the launch date supposedly of the first proof and of course me and gregory it's it's like uh um so in his game yes yeah so, so 144 moves around the green circle i'm move number one today is the day for that move and i've been kind of yeah i mean I've, I've got a whole bunch of videos i've got like a, a software program i've got but it could be in a sense, the launch of the whole secret plan. I've done a few videos that are more, okay, here we go. Like if, if I said to you, okay, I want one video and this is gonna be your promo for video for game of now. And that's it. I want like 20 minutes, give it to me. I did that for the secret plan, not knowing I did it, but I did it. It was just like the start of going full captain sweep, full plan, you know, using the backgrounds and going, okay, like this is gonna be a daily show. I'm going to, you know, because I, I, I've done it, but there's such a, because I'm always speaking to nothingness, I have no feedback around what the, you know, I, I have none, none, oh, it's for so long. And what Gregory did is he just went, you what, you did it, you got it, I got it, good. Like just one person, right, who's going, no, you're ready, or it's, it's ready, or, you know, I like what you have. I mean, again, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been putting up a lot of videos over the years and, you know, the subscribers hasn't changed. The comments don't appear like it just feels as if it's always going into nothing. So I've come to the point of just realizing like our whole like we did like 10 or 12 videos. Nobody's seen them. Nobody's seen any of the stuff, which I think is great content. I think is like stuff is fucking better than this other stuff I'm watching. And yet 200,000, 2 million, 20 million views. And again, like three, two, one, never shared, never anything. And it, it has me believe, you know, that I'm in this kind of coffin and I'm fucking sending shit out and no feedback, no feedback, no feedback. But today, because me and uh, Gregory have been making, so I made him a website for the library. I put the move, I built it. He, does, he doesn't kind of know how to, that's his stumbling block. He doesn't know the tech well enough to be able to create some of these things he wants to create. And so now the two of us have been working together and actually like sort of in a sense rolling with one another or having someone who's, who's just as crazy, who's whipping these big downloads and sort of expecting me to kind of get it in the moment. But it was, it's been very nice. It's been very nice. And the entire time, there's always this thought in the background, well, there's three of us, you know, this is a threesome, this is a triad, but Graham's over, you know, William's over there. And, you know, this had to happen because what I see is your game being a move. And so it's, it's kind of like, he's now positioning you in this game. Your position is in his, I'm positioned in yours. And me and him, like we found the, the the triad of connection between our work. If you if you want to be a moved, so to speak. And I tell you, it, it, it's 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 just like when you gave me the opportunity to, you know, ponder what it would mean to be a kitchen in your game. You know, when you give an artist or a creator that, like that's a beautiful gift, as you're saying here. You know, play with this. Here's some parameters do what you can. And that's what he did. And to me, there's, there's like that mutual respect of seeing what the other person has done, valuing it enough to bring it into your own thing, but still giving it its own place. And, and thinking again, when you're talking about, you know, what are we building here? That's got to be the essence of it, right? It's like there's brilliant creators all around the planet. We're all about to kind of go into virtual reality together. And that you know, the distance between reality and virtual reality, just like you're saying, like, pop, pop, what the fuck are you talking about? Take some drugs. I mean, you can't fucking tell the difference. I mean, you know, we are entering into a world where you combine virtual reality with psychedelic drugs. Good luck. You know, we're, you know, they have no idea what's about to happen. And 
you know, bringing then together the forces of whatever has been trying to oppress this planet and then all the forces that want to enlighten the planet. Like we're in this beautiful time of, of, of about to burst, I think, even though everything's dead because they're, they're just trying to dampen everything, right? They're just trying to stop it. And it's some. I think, uh, I think, may I speak? Are you finished? What? No, no. <laughs> Go for it. Keep going. <laughs> And that's it. It's just like you, you're doing the build and the, like it's such a difference, right? It's, it's like there's a lot I want to say. Um, but I also, you know, want to honor <laughs> the two to it because I feel like I, I, I can, you know, I, uh, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited that, you know, that the, I think the ground rules are about to change. And that, you know, like, who are we with actual resources? Like, who are we with, like, two million bucks to actually spend on our creation? You know, who are we with gas money? Who are we with, like, a fucking an extra beer? Who are we to have that extra cheese sandwich because we didn't have one? You know, like, I mean, there's such a difference in a creator who's doing the best with what they got versus resource to do what they can. And I don't know about you, but I've been living in this world nearly all my life. And every time I get a little bit, it's like, fuck man like imagine you with a secretary imagine you with a fucking person who did anything you said just go do it imagine you with a, a team that could take that idea and just fucking go do it and just to get that going and then you're just fucking you know you got a a war room or a communications room where just you're just building things beautiful things for people right because you've got so much infrastructure and you're connected to so many people like you you've got this wealth of resources like in terms of people anytime you tell me things it's like i'm thinking holy shit like you are making relationship connections that are they're about to just go boom to build something amazing and i i, I can't like i honestly i mean i i don't know how much time you're spending with all these other motherfuckers but don't forget that you have this goal that you got at some point give everything to the goal and build that game and have that as your reference point for everything rather than anything else from anybody else. And I think, you you know, whether it's networker or whether you've been doing the Highlander thing or whether you're doing your penance or whether you're doing redemption, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but <laughs> what you showed me it was more exciting than I think anything I've ever seen. I mean, and my stuff is like... Okay, oh, like so just to clarify, just briefly, what thing? What? Your, your, your game. Like your idea for your game, right? that whole story, whatever, you know, that what you were sharing with me. And I go like, I've been working, I want to change the world. And I, you know, that's why I've been working on these things. But it, ultimately, like, I want to be in a room, uh, you know, on mushrooms, dance, shaking with a, with a tribe of people I love. That's what I, I'm not fucking doing mental maps and trying to teach people how to fucking think, you know, like, but, you know, you know it just, to me, I was looking at leverage, you know, you, we, we need to change things and, you know, value systems, businesses and all the things that I'm working on is just like boring business shit that is the leverage point to create the most transformation if it really comes across, right? In the right software program, the right tools, this can do major things, different from me shaking in some place, right? But it's like that artist kind of the distinction between what I really want to create versus, oh, I see all this needs to get done. And no one else is doing it. And I think that's what you've been doing, right? But I just, I just see with me, because I do the same thing. I, you know, I want to mentor people. I want to help people. And I don't fucking even have anything. And I'm still, you know, you're trying to, you know, we, we're in this service mode. But it, it's, it's like we get lost. We, we forget our gold. We forget, you know, that you've got, you got this beautiful crystal here that sometime clear everyone out of the room and get everyone just focusing on that crystal, nothing else. Use that as your envelope for how you interact with the world. And I, I'm sure you're doing it, but I just want to, if there, anyone ever re-emphasizes something, I just want to re-emphasize. Well, I, thank you. I, I'm not actually. Well, I am. I'm playing it, but I'm not doing it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you carry on. I, have, I, I can. Well, I, I guess I, I say that because because of what happened with Gregory and because, you know, I look at how we've talked and to me, we've talked as sort of 
you're on that path, I'm on that path, I'm in this island, you're in that island, we see someone who's doing the same shit, and you're kind of waving to each other, and you're sort of going, yeah, you know, this is, I could use a hand over here, man, but you could use it, you know, but you're, you're, you're trying to do something, but you're not receiving the support of the community. In fact, you're just getting resistance, at least, I don't know about you, but that's for me. And to change that, like Luciel changed it, like when I was speaking about what I was you know, my work and I'm, I'm, I'm having people listen and I'm having people really listen. I'm having people listen enough that they want to integrate it into a learning program. Change, like, it's just like, this is the first time in my life. I've never had this type of listening. I've never had, you know, this is what I have needed in order for me to feel confident to bring this work into the world because most time when I bring my work forward, it's, it's too complicated. It's dismissed. It's whatever. It never gets the attention of, oh, what is this? How do you use it? How do you do it? Okay. So I, I've always been just in this constant pattern of more creativity, but at some point going, well, fuck, it should be fucking making me a good living rather than just being empty in a closet, you know, with no one knowing except someone like you who once in a while goes, hey, Elijah, hey, whoa, it's that math kind of thing. And, you know, and it changes when, when you all, like the 144 people, go, you know, use the trust map. 144 people are looking at this map going, hey, wow, we're talking about trust differently because we have all these aspects of trust that are put down on this map. You know, just like your friend, I'm trying to simplify trust, I'm trying to simplify communication and to have people do it. Now I can say they did it, <laughs> you know. I'm not the only person doing this. I'm not the only person who's sitting here, man, look at my stuff, look at my stuff. Like, it just feels like you're on the mountain and you're like this hermit. You got this map, planes are going over and people are jogging and you're just going, just look at the map, look at the map, look at the map, look at the map. It's going to make you feel your life better. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like this, <laughs> and they're looking at me going, what? <laughs> Why do we want to look at your map? <laughs> And then going again, kind of going to Gregory and Gregory kind of being in this, you know, uh, well, yeah, I, I think you can be the first move here. And uh, this is you got this free space thing and uh, just bring whatever you want. It doesn't matter. I love what you got. Just bring it in. And that's like, oh, somebody's asking for my work. Just like when you, you said, I, I, I hear what you're doing and I'm actually going to make a room for you in my, my, my little tavern. And to me, that's like, oh my God oh my what what you know it's it's uh it's degrees of uh you can talk about physical awareness and sensation of uh, let's say this stuff but again it is it's the, how do you bring a life work into the world how do you bring like for your teacher like you know i would say you'll be a way better teacher than him you may not have the depth of knowledge, but I think you have a, you have an ability with people that is going to be, I don't think you've even touched, you know, give you 500 people in a room, give you 20 helpers, give you, you know, that once and then watch what happens, right? Like I feel if I was given that, I could fucking blow people out of the world. You know, I could, I got so many ways I could blow people, but I've never had the chance. No one's ever given me a stage. And at some point I just said, fuck you. I said, fuck you to society. And fuck you to my friends. I said, I'm just going to keep working until the almighty opens the door. Because anything I'm doing is not going to work. I just, there's too much resistance. There's too much rejection. There's too much. It's just, just fuck off. And then that residue builds into this wall of, oh shit, I'm disconnected from everybody. I don't like anybody. <laughs> That's not going to work. And then, you know, and then, 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 and again, like launch day of going, but wait a second. You know, for me, the launch day, I didn't put any sort of, oh, I hope it's going to work or I'm going to, like, it was just, I just kept going. And he said, this is launch day. And it's not really a launch day. To me, there wasn't enough work done to make it a launch day, but just the idea of it created this openness, like the free space of going, who gives a fuck about the work? We've done so much work. All we have to do is even just go like this. And the whole thing's going to appear. That's why, like, I just want to bring some significance to talking to you now because, you know, the third element, it's like you can't just, just you can't throw people out that are part of it. 
but you got to remember who's part of it. You got to remember, you know, who are these players? Like you keep bringing Gino's name up, right? It's just like Gino like is on the team, but I haven't talked to Gino since the beginning of LCL. I don't know what Gino is doing, but I'm sure Gino is doing a fuck of a lot. You know, and I'm doing a fuck of a lot. And so we, we think we're alone. Like when you're talking about your, your Chris, it's like, I, I feel, you know, I, I've never felt more alone in my life in the last year. Right. And I'm sure a lot of people are like that. And yet kind of like the, the seeds in the earth, something's been growing as a result of what we talked about and all these people we're meeting. And it's just like, it's, it's, it's about to come out. And each of us is like a catalytic point to do so. And, uh, but it's, it's like this, it's like when we get the listening from the other, when we get the deeper listening, then we can speak. I don't want to talk about my stuff if I got to, you know, I'm getting interrupted and every time it's, it's like a battle to say something. And that depends, right? That's a two-way convo, could be a debate, could be a whatever. But I think sometimes I've done so much listening for people. <laughs> like I've, I've just, you know, tell me what it is. And then, but I don't get the listening. And I, you know, I had to tell you, I want the listening now. I want to be able to share what's coming through because I have to now. And so I, and I appreciate your listening because it's coming at a level that to me has comprehension and understanding and interest, which is sorely lacking in most people I talk to. It's good to see you, my friend. I hear you. It's, um, yeah, apologies if earlier I wasn't uh, awake enough. It's quite late here to to tune into that. It's a very interesting thing around, I think it's an energetic signature. Um, so I have a friend, uh, she's also falling out with me. I, I, it's one of these things that I, it, it happens a lot to me. Um, cause I have the sense that if I push just a little bit too much with clarity around, they just go, Oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to look at that and I'm off. And, uh, she said this thing is that, you know, sometimes tuning into you that there's there's <clears throat> it's like you're 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 not there or you there's something not there i can't even reach you um you're like invisible so it doesn't matter what you see people who are involved in their stuff and their daily work and they're thinking here their their minds are distracted by all the social media elijah's pinging here it's like oh there, yeah he's there oh, he's there again but they're not, they're not on that wavelength. They haven't, it's like their radio is not tuned to you. Occasionally you, yeah, time trying to say, what was that? And then you're off again. It's like their radio is, you know, so to connect to your frequency and someone like Gregory as well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I think it's, a, it ha, it's, it's an embodied frequency. Chris had it as well. People couldn't be around him because he just shines a light and then they're just blinded by this clarity. And it's like, well, I've got nothing to say because you, you know everything. And I think that's what people intuitively, a part of them are afraid of that. So I, I you know, the game and now his birthday, I, I pushed it, I tried that, I contacted. I wasn't really behind it, it said they're coming. Uh, one person, you know, so I said, like, okay, whatever. whatever. And I'm interested now with what you're talking about regarding re being resourced. Yeah, it could happen very quickly. It could be this year, very soon, where suddenly there's millions available for all sorts of things. Did you see that video I sent you with the 20 people in the very secret plan? Uh, I saw I saw many of them. Yes. No, but the ones the one specifically because it was it had twenty characters. You were one of them. I saw that and I remember it because Juan Carlos was also in it, and I'm talking to Juan Carlos now. Did you watch it till the end? I forget if I watched the end. The something. Okay, because specifically, what the idea is that each person in the plan of those twenty is like we're all going to 
team at getting a million dollars each. Oh, right. That's right. The fund. Are you saying that? I'm just going to, I'm looking into the feed. Did you send it in the feed as well? Uh, no, you didn't. You, you tagged me because that's your. Yeah. I should have. I, I no. I, the next step is to send it. <laughs> I like, just like you. I mean, I wasn't kind of, it's not a question of not being behind it, but it's sort of anticipating. I anticipate. It's fearful, like it's anticipating being ignored or just sort of going. Well, interesting. What would you do with a million? What would I do? Yeah. I'd uh, just before I can I take the question back and ask a question before it before I ask you that again. Okay. This was one of Chris's favorite thought experiments for anybody. I'm going to give you a million. What would you do with it? Is that isn't that the same question? Yes, but I'm saying that's he used this a lot because his answer is for me is 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 the best answer that I've heard. Oh, okay. <clears throat> what's his answer? Or you or you actually want me to so what's your answer? Well, me a... I mean, it would be basically fund, you know, the inflow matrix, new paradigm toolkit, secret plan, school of conscious communication, planetary guardians. Um, you could even say let's say two hundred thousand each for each. Um, enough to get them all going on their own. Like all of them can be self-sustaining in terms of uh, the business side. So to me, any type of funding you get, you want to put enough in to get the ball rolling in a sense. So to me, it'd be like a certain amount of card sets printed enough to be sold. Uh, the software developed to a certain point that it was making money and uh, you know, the key people getting salaries and the, uh, whatever the missing pieces to be put together. Cause I've got like tons of these, you know, prototypes and kind of like, like build, like build a community communication center. I don't think a million is enough, but I mean, it would definitely be enough to, to show people enough to get the rest of the money. Cause like, you know, everything I got, it's made. It's not like an idea anymore. It's like, fuck, I can show anyone this. And it's fucking amazing, man. Like it's just fucking amazing. The, Um, I was going to ask you about uh, yeah the software Is it? I heard a knock there's a cat in this house somewhere that'd be funny if I cat put up right beside you <laughs> like that wing the cat is not in here no um, Chris's answer was uh, he would uh, he would just get uh, a group of people uh, together and and, uh, and pay that for flights and accommodation and food and they would spend a week together and they wouldn't move until they agreed on how they would spend the rest of it. I like that, you know, in terms of the also, the other thing as well is, and I haven't done this. I mean, I, I, you're, you're inspiring me to maybe do this this week. I'm saying maybe I should just do it because I had, I did it in 2008, <laughs> which is what you were saying. If you've got a million, you say, okay, I need uh, that 200 grand. Okay. And, and on a, an express sheet. Okay. Is that accurate? You know, you know, there, there, there. I, so, for example, for my software, which I've never created ever, I, I started with three guys, but we were all, as a collaboration, we were all just chipping in. We weren't being paid. Um, and, and I learned a lot from that is that, you know, I need to find somebody who can answer my questions about, what well, you need a person who can do Unix and that and that and that. And that would probably take three months and it would require that and you did that kind of program. Okay, that's going to cost me 60K for one programmer, you know. Yeah. Then there's my income, then there's the marketing, then there's the this, and there's the, so it's having to really uh, put all that down. And my sense is that I'm going to have to do that anyway for uh, this group that's now forming. 
And just in terms of this group that's forming, I can see that well, I'm speaking to France on Wednesday, and she's the one who's uh, apparently talked to someone at LCL to bring the curriculum that you're creating into what she and Chris were talking about. Oh, really? Okay. And I'm interested to find out who she's talked to, what's that about, where's that going, what, what's happening there. Um, because Chris was very much, he had his, I'm going that way. And I can't see him having collaborated with anybody, to be honest. I don't mean that you wouldn't have like a decentralized school where you've got different offerings. He'd be part of that, but he'd be doing his thing and he'd be doing his teaching. And um, there'd be no sort of, we're all meeting together in a Zoom and discussing each other's work. I mean, we might know each other and know what we're doing, but he's very much that. And, you know, as uh, you've said it before, but the, there's so many strong characters and very independent people, very individuals, you know, strong individuals. It's the same, it's the same with you. You look at any history of gurus, okay, Krishnamurti never met uh, Sri Nishragatha, blah, 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 even though they live very close to each other. The, Muji wouldn't, they don't talk to each other. Yeah. It's not as if they hang out and go, hey, man, hey, sad guru, how you doing, man? It's Muji here, oh, hey, what? No contact. They're doing their thing. They're doing, they, they'll, go, they'll just go, they'll acknowledge the others with respect, say, yeah, absolutely. But don't compare. Yeah. You're, you're, you're here because you've tuned into this. You need this stuff in some way. You already know it. You just, they've just forgotten it. And so, how, so for example, Juan Carlos was the School of Social Alchemy. So there's a School of Social Alchemy. There's, um, how do you plan to regard it? Is that how you classify all of your work? Um. <sighs> Well, Plantier Guardians was more the the brand and the more of the media game side. Like each, like the inflow matrix would be the languaging for the software thinking system. The new paradigm toolkit is the specific tools. Secret Plans the Web TV show, School of Conscious Communication is the school. So those are the five main pillars in a sense. And they kind of again they correspond to the personal space one on one. Are you bringing are you bringing all of that into the cell or just parts of it? I I'm bringing parts of the new paradigm toolkit. So they were sort of like tools, like because we've gone through the process of, of sort of identifying, you know, first personal development, then group coherence, then collective intelligence, and so each of us, our mentors coming more from the gene keys and human design. Yeah. Carl, uh, you know, Juan Carlos has his own magic canoe and, uh, his, you know, his whole toolkit. He's got lots of stuff. I've got, you know, I bring the new paradigm toolkit. And then there's a couple of other members, Brian and John, who are more like they're the only really legitimate business people there. I think everyone else is kind of like us, like, you know, the, the, really in the new paradigm, but no solid foundation of a business. And so these guys are like, I think one guy's an ex general and one's an ex attorney general really. And they're, they're, they're funny. Cause they're, they're, they're so friendly. They're just so warm. And they're kind of like the, sort of the glue or they're kind of like the facilitators that are sort of facilitating from a very soft place. And then the three of us are coming in with the different knowledge fields. And then the LCL group is kind of picking and choosing what they want in order and then adding their own sort of hosting. That's interesting then. If uh, interesting to see who France is talking to. Because there's Olivier and Sophie, they're kind of like the king and the queen in a sense. They're, they seem to be the, the center point. And I think Sophie probably is the center point of that. I think she's a very gifted, uh, I don't quite know a lot about her, but I, I think that she, she just has this incredible, you know, warmth, love, genuine, you know, kindness, all the things you'd, you'd hope in somebody. And to me, like they, they put the time, like to me, if you're searching for spiritual elders across the planet, that's like a, a very high end sort of noble quest or goal. Like, so to me, 
they're doing things straight from guidance. They're, you know, the, the signals I was getting was that this, this was like a good, a good first container for me to put my work into. And then I said to myself, I'm not going to disassociate because so many times I just kind of leave because I, I don't think the group is going in the direction I want or think it's a good idea. And I just said, no, I'm going to stick to this no matter what. And, and in the end, it was, I, 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 I've been pulling yeah. my out of so many things, right? I mean, it's, I think for me, this whole question of who resonates with who alignment the chemistry between people you know that sense of yeah this is this feels right um this whole question of uh activating collective intelligence and particularly leadership around you know, everyone's leading his or her own part, but there are no leaders. Uh, that's very difficult, I find, because uh, even in these DAOs, these decentralized autonomous, there's always a leader. There's always the founder, there's, there's, there's the instigator, there's a the person who brought it together, there's a person who had the vision, and then uh, you either play that game with them or you leave. And that, that's been the same in any business, in any venture. You, you disagree with Steve Jobs? Good luck to you. He's, you know, he, if there's a very willful person, you either say, I'm joining his or her boat, or you just get out of the way. Or you end up in a fight. And I think this sense of how we, how do we support each other, make sure everyone's got their needs met financially and otherwise, um, acknowledging each other's work and at the same time, because I can hear, I mean, I hear Chris, even though he's beyond the physical form, there's we've, a lot of people have interpreted this and it's it's a challenge is that indigenous does, does not mean better uh, by default. Oh, they're indigenous, therefore they, they're wiser. They have great wisdom, of course. Uh, not all of them. I've been in Native American tribe, and there's a lot of very bad behavior, <laughs> just as there is anywhere else. Yeah. And there is wisdom that's from centuries old that's been passed on. And then there's the future stuff. And then it's like, how do we? Yeah, I mean, it's a microcosm of the microcosm. How do you, you, me, and Gregory have a coherent, respectful conversation as three adult men? You know, <laughs> that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> well, you know what? I sense something in you that's different. I sense, um, I, and I, I think just with what's happened with me and Greg, or at least I understand now the connection before I didn't, and now I do. And I think that the, um, I would really like to have maybe a call with the three of us this week. I'm open to that. I'm open to change. I mean, I think I think for me the, the the major difference is well, one is my dad died, and the second is Chris died. Right. So I'm an orphan. Uh, I don't get on that well with my sister, and I just got my son. Yeah, that's it. It's just me and him, and uh, you know, his mother and I are tolerate each other, but there's no huge warmth. There's no hey, how you doing? How are you getting on? So actually, in terms of support, I've got William here in London. And that is good. But I, I, in Europe, I have nothing. Uh, well, that's not true. I have a few others dotted around the place, but it's not as if they're going to say, yeah, come and stay with me or do this or do that. So now it's time to, I've not earned any income for 14 months. So I spent all my mother's inheritance uh, and uh, I'm living on universal credit from the government just to feed myself. So that situation has to change. And it's actually, I think it has to change mainly because I don't think many people, I mean, you've got your work and you've got your thing, but it's also in terms of people don't really know where to 
position me. They don't know how to talk about me to other people. Oh, you've got to meet Graham. He's doing this game and now. What is it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, or he's, you know, let me say, you know, I'm a grounding presence. I'm a real sort of, you know, if I'm in a call, there's this energy. But most of them aren't even aware of it. Like they have no, I can feel it. I can, I'm where I can, I know exactly who, who's larger beyond the conscious mind is paying attention to what I'm sending and signaling. And most of them have got no idea. So trusting that, I just have to say, well, it's just a bit of patience, really, just the wait. Well, then maybe I feel a lot of times in someone's field, the need of the moment comes through and I have to sort of address it. And I, and I think that's more my purpose is to give feedback, right? Sometimes for people, to, because I know it helps me so much when someone can just sort of acknowledge something or sort of point to my, I can go all over the place and I am all over the place. Sometimes you got to keep it tight. Yeah. Um, I think for whether friends or allies or like actual supporting team members, you need to be like that with one another. And I think we spend enough time together to you know, calibrate a bit. We both have our sort of ESP. And so I, I think we both can be very valuable to one another to give that feedback around when things are on or when things are off. I, I think what's happening with uh, Greg right now is, you know, we are talking about like, he has said, okay, I got access to the money. Like whenever anyone says, hey, I got access to the money or the money, anything about money to me is like this. <laughs> I, I don't even want to, you know, some part wants nothing to do with it, nothing. And another part goes, I want everything to do with it. It's not all we need is like a document, right document, and let's say two meetings, and all of us could be funded, you know, for the rest of our lives, basically. What, I, it, yeah. Whatever I have, like whoever is is on, let's say to me, whoever's on the team at the beginning, we're, we're going to be set for the rest of our lives. Like that's like the people who started Microsoft, the people who started big ideas at the beginning, need to get rewarded because. That's the way life works, right? In my mind. Anyway. So to me, we've, we've paid our dues and now it's a time to, to, to get some rewards for what we have. And, and that's, and, and he's a, like, the like minded to me. I know I can't do it by myself. I may have the value to, of what it could take, but I cannot do it by myself. I, I just, too many things I'm not good at. And I think that with a, with a, a team that at least I see happening, whether it's those 20 or some of the 20, it's a great team. We have a great team. And then people invest in teams. People invest in the team and they invest in the team. And me and Greg have something very special and I want to protect it or nurture it or at least acknowledge it because me and Greg are in that space with one another right now. And I know that I really haven't been there until that kind of connection point to your magical tavern in the kitchen. And then it's like, okay, well, to me, that was like a, so now that, 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 yeah. Have you read it? Huh? I sent it to you. Have you read it? The book? Yeah. <laughs> you, I, I don't expect you to read it. But it's funny. It's, it's only been read uh, three times. And twice for the same woman, the woman who I was with when I wrote it, and uh, and then I've had an editor read it, and she read it again the first like chapter, two chapters, and immediately said, "Oh, this is supernatural, uh, uh, young adult." Uh huh. Because I wrote it very simply, the language I wasn't trying to, and it's. Uh, but there's a lot of deep stuff in there and a lot of odd stuff. But the, I mean, there's three parts. The first part is the, well, actually what uh, Vasya suggested to me was I needed to write a, write a beginning before to bring in a human character to connect to the spider, because if I didn't, you're just jumping straight into the Golden Spider Tavern, supernatural, straight from the beginning, multidimensional tavern. It's like, where am I? I'm lost. 
So she said, start with uh, something, you know. So I created this and, and what I did, the whole book was like this, was that whatever was arriving in my life at that time, I pulled it in and wove it in. That was the whole point. And so when I was doing that, it was Atlas Talisman. You know Atlas? Uh, no. Atlas, Atlas is a friend of Jordan's, the Civil X guy. Uh, and many others. I mean, Atlas is amazing. So Atlas uh, happened to be in conversation with me and we were talking about broccoli. So he became Brock. So he's the character right. now in the prologue as an older man in the future whose house says to him, uh, you know, uh, Brock, in one hour you will be <laughs> 88 years old, right? And he's listening to that. And then he, uh, <clears throat> and then he shuts it up because he forgets, he, he programmed it to tell him that and remind him. So he's like, oh, sh quiet. And then he's sitting there and he's watching this golden spider, a spider coming down in a web and the light shining, the sunset is becoming gold and he's just watching it. And then he has a heart attack and dies basically. And now he goes, congratulations, Brock, you are oh, dead. And that's how, that's how so he dies. And then he, the spider begins. So he wakes up as a spider. So that basically, um, you in the third part and that it's the it's the the dark isle of tavisharn where the holographic castle is that uh and you in the kitchen would do you know remember <laughs> i forgot that you're in there with gino uh because you're chasing him around the, the table with the, the brush <laughs> He's going, hey man, hey, hey man, it's gonna be alive. It's gonna be alive. <laughs> but in terms of if if I was given the you know the moon and the, the, the magic wand, uh, Darius. So the guy's name is, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about names, but there's a guy who's a producer, produces big budget Hollywood films. Darius knows him because Darius is ex-wife and the acting and the whole thing. And, and Darius has got his plans. And I just told Darius about Golden Spider. He said, well, I can talk to him. We can get, you know, a, a TV series and whatever. They can produce it. You know, I'll just see a new writer, first time writer. And I'm like... <laughs> but that's how it works over there. It's called, yeah, we've got this guy's great script. We'll work it out, make it happen. Yeah. So in terms of what I, I don't think this is, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think this is out there and be done before, where you have, they might have tried it with Black Mirror and Bandersnatch when they had an interactive aspect to it. But imagine there's a story I'm talking too loudly. I'm talking too loudly. So imagine there's um yeah, imagine there's there are stories. Uh now I don't know if if you if you created a story around time translator or created a story around the the library or whatever whether these are cartoons you know or animated stories because once they get supernatural it's hard to put actors in those and you know but people have to watch them and then they interact with them in some way and there's a community that follows the stories and goes out. Ah, it's the same sort of style of artist, you know. You know, you you can tell ah, that's in that. And there's a, there's Golden Spider. There's Planetary Gardens. There's you know Free Space, and people are watching these, and they're coming out. And yeah, they're all interconnected, you know. And you you've got a website 
connected to these uh, series where you've got the online work to do as well. And you, you, you know, there'll be technology that if you watch it, you get tokens because you've watched the episodes. You've watched all 10 episodes. So you get X amount of tokens and you, know, you, you engage in the program, you get X tokens, you, you do that. If you want to enter and you, you pay money or you pay subscription and, and then you're into a year subscription of all the different episodes that are being made. And, uh, and then the idea that the people I was talking to was if like in the Golden Spider, for example, it would be then that's easy to turn into a game. People can then design uh, the way it looks, you know, competitions for the artists, you know, okay, so, and then the characters and then people designing different, and people vote on it and it's making it a community thing. So it's a very interactive, you know, you've got series one, series two, and the characters appear in different ones. So that, that's just like the Marvel universe, I guess. Because you'd have Superman film, then you'd have Superman's appearing in other films, Justice League, and they're all. I'm quiet now. <laughs> you know, I just had this thought. It wasn't the nicest thought. It was being your masters at speaking to what could be. And yet, like, let's say you and I were building a building. And, and we go, well, you know, we need a 10 screw by four, so we need 20 screws. We need, like, if you're building something, you actually talk about the specific thing, what you're going to use. But with us, we're always talking about ideas. And it's always, not necessarily what always could be, but I'm just saying that I, I think we have to move out of the, we have to get a little bit more logistical. And, and I think it's the conversation type that, for me, I don't really like. Like there's the operations conversation and the creativity conversation. And uh, I think people who are playing in the philosophical realm, you know, can really detach from, uh, like for, for let's say your game and you're going, because there are times in terms of your, like if you wrote down, let's say all your relationships in connection to this the, the, the game or the movie or any, you know, whatever container you're going to use. And you just wrote down your relationships and what they could do and then wrote down a budget. You could probably get your funding, let's say, within a week of that. Because people would just say, you know, here's the idea. Here's the people I know. And here's, the, here's what I need the money for. You know, that's the start. And I think it's, it's like... Yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah. No, you're right. And it's, it's happening with Darius and France, I've, I've got no doubt. Yeah, and it just seems like, again, like the, sometimes things can be so much simpler than we think. And like, again, I'm sort of, I put a lot of attention to kind of get these things ready rather than just make the simple document that talks about what it actually is. You know, if I just did that, I could raise, let's say 200 grand tomorrow or something. Somebody who just goes, okay. And that starts something different, right? Then we're talking about, you know, okay, sweep, I need this by this, I need you to do this, this, and this. Yeah. Well, it's a bit like when I did the Little Rascals, the kids' game uh, as a prototype, when I actually sat down and started to write it, and then we did it as a prototype. It's the logistics of it, is so complex. Even just having 10 parents, okay, you've got to contact them on the Monday. And then to do that next, and then we have to create that. But then you write a letter. We did, did it, it took three months to do that. And we did it our, off our own budget and time. But uh, knowing that, how complex it can be. Well, actually, you know what I'm thinking? Because I think, like, he's a voluminous writer. I think I've got the structures. I think the three of us, if we just focused, let's say, for a week or so, we can do it. We can create a document that can fund all three of our projects together. And, you know, like within the month, like I, I, I'm, I'm at that, I want that. I, I, I'm tired of, I, I, I want to have a life. I want a life that isn't just 
be fucking, you know, holding on to the back of the truck as it's driving along as I'm trying to map out what's happening. It's like, okay, I, I, I've done my penance or my redemption. I think you have too. I think we all have. Like it's, it's time to, it's time to change. I really think so. I could just hear, I could see you know, up in Scotland when you sit up there and it's just like, okay, here I go again. <laughs> this isn't exactly what I planned and this isn't exactly going in the direction that I thought. <laughs> but you know, so how about like, I think I'm coming to the end here. Um, how about within the next few days, tell me and I'll arrange with Greg and let's have a chat with Greg in the next few days. Uh, let me just look at the. Uh... Calendar, because uh, he's in Nantucket, is he? Yep. Which is four hours behind now. He, he has something. He has a, a woman in Brazil who's like a PhD teacher of writing, writing his George McCurvious character as a storyline. Uh, I mean, just like we all have a very kind of good network of people around us that, you know, again, if we sort of like connect all the dots, it's there. Maybe Gino's in the middle. Maybe Gino's the fourth. Hey? Okay? Oh. Gino's a um, great networker. He's so busy. I, I think he would jump at the chance. I think he knows that we all we got some gold here. I think what we have is the glue to put whatever he wants to put together too. I don't agree. <laughs> well, you know a lot more about it than I do. I just think I have the glue to put everything together, so I can say that about anything, right? Doesn't necessarily mean that you agree or anyone, but remember, I feel like I have the global information system to unite us all. So. I just like check Kurt Brad to Madness. You know, when, so, hmm. when it all goes down, I think they'll go back to this video and go, you know what? I think that's where it started. I think <laughs> this is the place. I had that <laughs> conversation last week with Fleming and Mark Wagner. Yeah. Uh, this is where it all began. The sofa, the virtual sofa conversation, right? Where's the... Uh... What are you trying to do? I'm, trying, I'm looking at my calendar. So, Tuesday? Tuesday? What time? Well, if it's eight o'clock my time, that would be um, uh, one o'clock your time, and it would be 4 p.m. Greg time. So, between I, between seven and nine, between that's uh, you're seven hours behind me right now. Okay, I'll get Greg there. Okay, so I think we had a great chat. Great to see you. Okay, bye. I get my cane. I quite like the cane. I got a walking stick too. Good, okay. Good to see that uh, you're still alive. I am still alive. Some people do text me sometimes saying, are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Signs of life. All right. Okay. Ciao. Ciao.